Ladies and gentlemen, I have some incredible news for you guys today. Like, literally, some of the biggest news in gaming that is going to change everything. Now, I do need to test this for myself, which I'm actually going to be doing on the Xbox Series X right now, but apparently every single Xbox 360 Call of Duty game is fixed now. Like, the matchmaking actually works. If you guys didn't know, apparently when Xbox One had the whole backwards compatibility stuff for old Xbox 360 games, the matchmaking for the older Call of Duty games was basically completely busted. It was very hard to find lobbies, at least as time went on. Like when it first happened and there were a lot of players online, everything was actually okay. Like you could find matches, but for at least a couple of years or so, maybe even longer, it hasn't actually been working. But we just got news today, which is incredible news, that a lot of these older Call of Duty games like COD 4, World of War, the original Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1, I think maybe even Modern Warfare 3, they should all be working now. Which if you're someone like me who grew up playing a lot of these games, this is massive news. A lot of these older Call of Duty games have not been playable at all. Wait, we have to get an update. Oh, for okay, I guess we have an Xbox Series X update. Hopefully when that's done, we'll actually be able to test this out. But as I'm sure you guys know, I have a series on the channel, which is basically playing this old Call of Duty game X number of years later, depending on, you know, what year it is and how long it's been. I love making those videos, and it's very clear to me that you guys love watching them, because every time I make those videos, they end up getting a lot of views, they get a lot of likes. It's clear that you guys want to see more of that stuff. But I really have not been able to deliver that as much in recent years, because when I go back to play the older Call of Duty games on the Xbox 360, which is the platform that I played them on, I've got all my progression, all my unlocks, everything there, I typically cannot play because the matchmaking systems were just not working. Now, to be perfectly honest, we're just going to be kind of quickly testing to see if the matchmaking works. I don't plan to extensively play any of the older Call of Duty games right now, but if you guys really do want to see a video or multiple videos of me going back and playing the older Call of Duty games with fixed matchmaking on the Xbox 360, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new. This news has made me so happy, but at the same time, there is something kind of insidious going on in the background, which we'll talk about in a sec. But, you know, obviously, first and foremost, I want to see if the matchmaking really is working for these games. So that way I can recommend for you guys to get back on here and we can all go back and play these old COD games again and relive the nostalgia. But while we're waiting for this silly little console to get its update and actually be usable, I do want to talk about another massive piece of gaming news, which I would have covered sooner. But recently I had to get a tooth filling and I was going to talk about this sooner, but I just had too much stuff going on that day. I, you know, my mouth was sore. I couldn't actually really even talk that much, but I'm all good now. The other massive piece of gaming news, which I'm sure by now you guys did hear about, is the fact that the FTC was denied their court case against Microsoft acquiring Activision, which now means, at least in the US, Microsoft has the green light. They are now given the go ahead to acquire Activision, which means that they will now own Call of Duty. All right, let's launch COD 4. Let's see. Okay, I need the disc. All right, good old days of inserting discs. Let's see if it's going to be able to read my COD 4 disc, please. Now, the last major hurdle that Microsoft is going to have to overcome is the UK CMA. They have still blocked the deal, and apparently there's some kind of negotiations going on because they really want to be able to actually still sell Activision games in the UK market. It's a massive market, and I think it would be really dumb if they weren't able to actually come to some kind of agreement and get the game sold over there too. But if I'm not mistaken, they also put out a statement saying that they would be willing to pull from the markets to make the deal go through if the UK... UKCMA does not approve the acquisition, which is definitely some pretty crazy stuff. But yes, here we are on Call of Duty 4, good old Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, the original. Let's go on down to multiplayer. Let's see if we can actually find a match. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it still says 3,000 players online. It's basically always been stuck at this number, but maybe we can actually find a TDM. Oh my God. <laughs> no way, dude. Oh my God, my childhood. <laughs> yes. Let's go. You know, honestly, I was going to say some stuff, but this has just made me so happy. The fact that we're back on this. Now, I mean, I'm not really seriously going to be playing. You're just going to see some random COD 4 stuff in the background. I don't even have this pulled up on my second monitor. I just wanted to try to get this video out so quickly to you guys. So that way you know that it's working again. I can't believe they just randomly fixed this. It's been years since this has been working. Dude, the input delay is crazy right now. Just because I'm, you know, playing through OBS. I'm not playing on my monitor, but yeah. I probably won't be able to hit one single sniper shot on here, but oh my god, dude. We could test some other games as well, but I'm pretty sure that all of these games should be working now. Which does bring me to my next point, which is a little bit more of a sinister one, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. This is just my opinion and my speculation on everything that's been going on with the Microsoft acquisition of Activision, but it seems like there's been a lot of different things happening as of lately 
as a result of this deal getting closer and closer to actually being finalized and pushed through. In just the last two years or so, we've seen a lot of different things happen with Call of Duty. We've seen Sony get more and more aggressive about the PlayStation exclusive bonuses that you get in Call of Duty games. The matchmaking for older Call of Duty games on the Xbox 360 for the longest time was not working at all. And even in just the last couple of months, we've been seeing a lot of Activision takedowns of different things. They were going after mappers in Fortnite who were making Call of Duty experiences on Fortnite. Now, granted, they could profit from that, so that actually kind of makes sense. But they've also been going after fan-made Call of Duty modded projects like SM2, the entirety of X Labs, which also had a negative impact on the boy clients as well. And now, apparently, magically out of the blue, Xbox 360 Call of Duty games are working again. They have working matchmaking. Now, I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to put two and two together. It seems very apparent that since now Microsoft is going to own the Call of Duty IP in its entirety, they now have a reason to actually care about Call of Duty. It seems like when Sony had all of the power in this situation and they could get the best exclusive bonuses for Call of Duty on PlayStation, it just kind of seems like there wasn't much of an incentive for Xbox to care about how Call of Duty was performing on Xbox because a lot of people had actually moved away from Xbox consoles to get those PlayStation bonuses and ultimately buy PS4s and PS5s. But ultimately, if you want the best possible performance for Call of Duty, you know, you're going to play it on PC. But the point I'm trying to get across is that for the longest time, there were no fixes to matchmaking for these old COD games on Xbox. And that goes for all of the Xboxes. We're talking about the 360, the Xbox One, and the Series X. It just didn't work. Now, obviously, a big part of this conversation is that now that Microsoft is getting one step closer to fully owning Call of Duty, they're most likely going to want to put all of the old Call of Duty games on the Xbox Game Pass. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't personally have anything against that. I think that would be a huge incentive for people to buy the Xbox Game Pass. It could be a really good deal. And if it brings more people onto the old Call of Duty games and can repopulate the multiplayer, then I don't see anything wrong with that at all. All I'm trying to say is that they really had no incentive whatsoever to actually make these games work until this deal happened. Now, granted, it still hasn't fully gone through, but they are closer than ever, and I'm sure they're going to do whatever they can to make it happen. Since it got approved in the US, I would not hold your breath. I am pretty sure that Microsoft is going to own Activision and all of their IPs very soon. Which is why they probably decided to actually make these old COD games work again. Because it seems like for quite a while now, Activision has had no incentive to actually make us play these old COD games and have them work. It just takes players away from the newest Call of Duty game, which hurts their revenue and hurts their sales. It's exactly why they've been shutting down so many fan-made projects and why these games have not been working for a very long time. But since Microsoft is going to be in charge of Call of Duty very soon, granted the exclusivity with Sony doesn't end until 2024, which we'll talk about in a sec, but for the first time in a very, very long while, it feels like Microsoft finally has a reason to care about the state of Call of Duty on Xbox. But like I was saying, we definitely need to talk more about what this means for the future of Call of Duty specifically. Which, by the way, uh, let's try to play a different COD game real quick. Let's launch Black Ops 1. Black Ops 1 hasn't been working either. Error? Downloadable content is damaged? Well, fix it for me, please. Okay, it's saying my DLC is damaged. I don't know exactly what that means, but hopefully we can actually find a match. Let's see if we can actually... There you go. Oh my, we actually have a TDM. There you go. Granted, it's not like super full right now, but look at all these new players, dude. Look at all the people who wanted to get back on and play these old COD games. We can finally do it now, man. Oh my God, this, this just makes me so happy. But yes, we do need to talk about the current state of Call of Duty and where it's going to be moving now that Microsoft is most likely going to fully own everything. Like I briefly mentioned earlier, Sony is still going to have their exclusivity deal with Call of Duty until 2024. So as far as it goes for new Call of Duty games coming up, we probably won't see any major or significant changes for Modern Warfare 3 2023 and whatever Treyarch Call of Duty game we're going to be getting in 2024. But like I mentioned, Microsoft now has a very big incentive to make Call of Duty as appealing as possible on Xbox, which does lead me to believe that the Xbox generation of Call of Duty, I'm forgetting exactly how long the exclusivity with Microsoft and Xbox was for Call of Duty, but I really do think we're actually going to get to that point where Microsoft is going to care about Call of Duty on Xbox again, and we're most likely going to see some kind of rollout of Call of Duty games on Game Pass. Holy aim assist. That was very good. <laughs> oh my god! I'm getting knifed over here. I'm back on the G11. Dude, the memories of Xbox 360 Call of Duty, it's just unparalleled. It's so good, man. We finally have it back. Oh, I'm feeding. But yes, as far as it goes for the immediate future of Call of Duty on Xbox, we now have working backwards compatibility. So if you want to go back and play any of these Call of Duty games on your Xbox 360 or your Xbox One or Series X, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do that now with hopefully no matchmaking issues. I mean, you'll definitely have more luck during peak hours and maybe during non-peak hours, it'll be harder to find matches. But I'm sure that now that this news has broken, there's going to be a lot more people playing these games than ever before. I think the best part about this is really just the convenience. Like you don't have to have a PC. You don't have to install a modded client. You don't have to learn how to do all that stuff. You can just play this now, which I think was exactly what Microsoft was hoping to do. 
basically try to take our attention away from modded PC clients and get us back on their console playing the backwards compatible versions of these games. It makes sense. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm not necessarily huge on the idea of basically taking away the player's choice, like taking away our ability to play modded clients and actually have some kind of other options, ultimately for them to finally fix backwards compatibility and fix the matchmaking for the old COD games. But since Microsoft is in power now, this is their decision and we're just gonna have to deal with it. If you guys want my honest opinion about this, I think that stonks for Microsoft are going to be soaring just like the rocket on launch here. But I really do hope that going forward, they reconsider, you know, the takedown of the mods and stuff like the cease and desists. It's not gonna surprise me at all that Microsoft is going to leverage whatever they can to get COD players back on Xbox consoles. Like, I know that's exactly what they want to do, and they're going to do whatever they can to make that happen. It's a business, I understand, but can we have our modded clients back? Like, come on, man. It's really not even that many people in the grand scheme of things that are going to be playing the modded clients. I mean, even right now, right now, as I'm making this video, there might be in total a couple hundred, if not a couple thousand people playing these modded clients compared to the millions that will be playing the actual Call of Duty games. Like... Come on, bro. It is really not that big of a deal. But aside from how this deal is affecting Call of Duty now, we also need to talk about the long-term plans for Call of Duty. Throughout all the stuff that's been going on, Microsoft has said that they want to expand Call of Duty to the Nintendo Switch, which, oh my god, how is it going to run it? That's going to be really interesting to see. Like, I think it's neat that they want to bring Call of Duty to the Switch, but I don't know how well the Switch is going to be able to run it. Now, there have been a lot of talks about a Nintendo Switch Pro coming hopefully within the next year or two. And if that really is true, then maybe a Nintendo Switch Pro would be able to handle a, a new Call of Duty game. I think that would be hilarious for content. Like, obviously, the game is going to run like garbage, but it could be really funny. Who knows? And like I was saying earlier, it's pretty clear that they also want to put the older Call of Duty games and potentially even the newer Call of Duty games on the game pass for xbox so if you're someone who already owns the xbox game pass then that's just going to make it even more valuable and even more appealing for you and for people who don't own it maybe it could be worth it but as far as it goes for new call of duty games starting in the year 2025 which interestingly enough they could make black ops Two remastered and that would be such an insane year to release it on not gonna hold my breath on that one but as far as it goes for those upcoming call of duty games I really have no idea what direction they're going to try to take things in. I know I had suggested this as well because Microsoft has made the Halo Master Chief Collection. They could do something very similarly with the older Call of Duty games and try to make some big mashup game, but I really don't know if that's what their goal is, like if they have that kind of idea in mind. I would safely assume that whatever Call of Duty and Activision have been doing with PlayStation over the last however many years, Microsoft is probably just going to try to emulate that success and continue to bring people to Call of Duty on Xbox instead of PlayStation. But they're not going to restrict PlayStation players' access to Call of Duty. You're still going to be able to play Call of Duty on PlayStation for a minimum 10 years, which is a very long time. That's what they've agreed to so far, and I'm sure they're gonna stick with that. And even after 10 years, I'm sure they're still going to have Call of Duty on PlayStation. I mean, hopefully this doesn't age poorly, but I mean, they could just be putting Call of Duty games on PlayStation for 10 years until enough people have moved over to Xbox, and then maybe, maybe after 10 years, they would consider not selling COD on PlayStation anymore. That could very well happen too, but we have to wait and see how that plays out. Now, as someone who has been playing Call of Duty since the original Call of Duty 4, I've seen a lot of different changes, like really small, subtle changes for these Call of Duty games over the years. And I'll tell you this, when we had these older Call of Duty games like Black Ops 1 on the Xbox 360, I really do feel like it played the best on the Xbox 360. I mean, it plays pretty well on PC, obviously. But in terms of the console experience, I think that it was best on the Xbox 360 until the exclusivity changed around the time of like Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3. This was very well documented on my channel around that time, but I had so many issues, so many terrible performance issues with Black Ops 3 on the Xbox One, and that's when their exclusivity changed to PlayStation. Basically what was happening around the time of the next-gen console war between the PS4 and the Xbox One is that the PS4 was able to run Call of Duty games significantly better than the Xbox One was able to. This was a very noticeable change that I could feel almost immediately. I basically stuck with Black Ops 3 on the Xbox One for the remainder of that year because I had a lot of time invested into the game. Unfortunately, a lot of money invested into the supply drop system as well, so I didn't want to lose that stuff. But right after Black Ops 3, when we got Infinite Warfare, and the Modern Warfare Remastered combo, that's when I switched to PS4 because I was noticing that Call of Duty was just playing out so much better on PS4. And that's most likely because of the deal that Call of Duty had with Sony at that time. Now, this is not something that I can guarantee. I don't know if Microsoft's gonna try to handle things the same way that Sony has, but my assumption is that going forward for new Call of Duty games after 2020, 
2024, I would assume that they're going to try to make these new Call of Duty games run the best on the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. And while they're still most likely going to be a PS5 and maybe even a last gen version of the new Call of Duty games, I'm pretty sure they're not going to run as well in comparison to the Xbox versions of those games. Also, Jesus, my aim. This has been a very interesting gaming experience today. Since Microsoft is going to own the entirety of Call of Duty, they're going to want to make sure that these games run the best on the Xbox consoles. I'm sure they're going to follow in the exact same footsteps as Sony. I'm sure they're going to consider the same exact exclusive kinds of things like battle pass bonuses, XP bonuses for playing on Xbox, Xbox exclusive skins, you name it. Again, this isn't fact, it's just my speculation, but they are certainly well aware of the success that Call of Duty has had on PlayStation, and I'm sure that they just want a piece of that pie. They want to make sure that they can get as much as possible from Call of Duty and take the success that they've seen on PlayStation and just convert that over to Xbox. But yeah, that's basically going to do it for today's video. I was really not expecting to post this today, but this was some massive news. I'm sorry if this video doesn't have as much editing as usual, but I really just wanted to get this video out today because this is some of the best news I've seen. I cannot believe I'm playing Black Ops 1 on the Xbox 360 in 2023, and it's actually working. So with that being said, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me cover the latest gaming news about Microsoft acquiring Xbox, and especially the fact that the old COD games on the Xbox 360 are working again. So with that being said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did it and you want to see some more old Call of Duty stuff on the Xbox 360, make sure to drop a like. I'll see you guys later. Come, <laughs>